What is going on, guys? We're back at it again with another episode of True Capacity Talks. And today we have Jim Con panelist, gym owner in just outside of Atlanta, uh, Lindsay Mattingly, that owns Grit Life Fitness. Today, Lindsay, outside of the rain, how are you doing? Doing really good. How about you? I am doing well, doing well. Awesome. Happy to be here. Yeah, um, me I too. want to I want to kind of take it back, right? Before Grit Life, right? Before some of the other work experiences that you had. And and I want to understand how the heck did you even get into fitness? So you graduate Purdue with a bachelor's of science in psychology. Why is yep. fitness the first jump? <laughs> well, um, I was never really into fitness before. And, um, it was like in middle school. I did, I did do track in middle school, but in, uh, high school and all through college, I was a singer and a dancer. So I wasn't really into any, um, sports or anything like that. But if you handed me a basketball, I could kill you in basketball. It's just one of those natural, you know, I could, I could do any sport, but, um, but regardless, you know, I had some things that, um, I had gone through as a child and, um, just with my history of, I've, I've gone through child sexual abuse, physical abuse and verbal abuse as well. And so I was hitting a very dark moment in my life and, um, I didn't really rise up and talk about it till like my teenage years. And, um, so once I got that out of my system and we got rid of the individual in our family, then I was like, oh man, I'm a free bird, but little do we know that like this, this really affects you for life. Right. So, um, there was things that I was turning to like bad habits, like drinking, I was turning towards drinking, hanging out with the wrong crowd. Um, and I really got connected into fitness. Like I realized when I started running or even lifting, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. When I was lifting weights. Um, I just kind of got into it in college, um, just as like an escape. I wanted to find a different escape. And so I signed up for a boot camp that was local to um our uh, our town at the time. And it was hilarious because when I went there, I was the youngest one. I was like 21 at the time, and or barely 21. And, uh, they were all like 50 and older. And after the warm up, I puked. And so that was when I figured I need to, uh, probably improve my health because the choices I was making at the time, I, I wasn't eating. I was constantly drinking coffee. I did go through, um, I, I, I wasn't diagnosed with an eating disorder, but honestly, I got, imagine me 110 pounds. I weigh 150 pounds right now. So I went through a period of that where I'm just like, I just wanted to ignore it. So I just had many wounds that kept on bleeding and I needed to get those healed. And that was my healing. So once I really got into, um, the boot camp, it was great. Got connected with great people. I was just feeling overall better. And I realized it was suppressing a lot of my emotions because I wasn't thinking about them. You know, I was able to take them out within the workouts. And so um, three years later with that boot camp, they said, Hey, why don't you become a coach? We would love to have you here. We're growing really fast and we'd like to have you start coaching out here. Well, it was right when I got engaged to Justin and, um, we were thinking of possibly moving. I'm like, well, this could be a possibility. So, um, I was bartending at the time and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I told all the women there, Hey, why don't we just start a a boot camp, And so I just wanted to coach them. I charge them $5 a head. <laughs> so they, I had a whistle and a pair of dumbbells and they each lost like five to 10 pounds within four weeks. And I knew I had something going on because it wasn't about weight loss. It was about community. And it was really about creating an environment for people to escape from the demons that they're battling outside in their own environment. And it really, I noticed that it, it really impacted these women. So I had something going on there. And so that's kind of how it really sparked my journey. And the rest is history. Um, started in a gym and then started just going on my own. Always been an entrepreneur. I always say I'm unhirable. Um, <laughs> never liked listening to anybody, but, um, that's pretty much how it started. That was a really long answer. <laughs> so, so you graduated and then you jumped into that class or you had, you had, you were at the school and you jumped in the class while you're still there. Um, when I was at what, when I was in college, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this was all during college. And then once I graduated college, I have a psychology degree Mm -hmm. and, um, I minored in theater and dance. And, um, so after that, I, I don't even use my degree anymore, but, um, after that we got married, my husband and I got married cause he wouldn't marry me until I graduated. And so we, um, I applied for a gym down in South Carolina and it was going to be my first, my first real gym job, right. Um, of getting in tune with that. And so, um, I got the job down in South Carolina and uh, my husband got his job in the same town. So, um, that's how it kind of sparked everything. I got into personal training, got into group training and just was really gaining experience as I was getting into the gym and just found out like, you know, I, I really want to go on my own. You know, I don't like how they run their business here. I don't like how they're being fair to people. They're not being fair to people. Um, and the owner is talking about people behind their backs. It's such crap. So that's when I wanted to step away and start my own thing and see what I could do. Yeah. And and just so I have the timeline correct, from the time that you went to that first boot camp, right, where you were not a coach, where you jumped in and you threw up in the warm up, from that yeah. to the to you being in in was it Charleston? Yeah. Was that eight years? That was about four years. Four years. Okay. Yeah. It was okay. a four year difference. Yeah. Cause I, gra- it took me seven years to graduate college, but I started getting into fitness, the beginning portion of, mm-hmm. co- well, it was actually high school. I started getting mm-hmm. into that in, in my senior year of high school, but it was really in the beginning stages of college that I started doing that. And that was when I was getting a little bit more active and I started the boot camp at least it was probably about a year and a half, two years after I started college. Okay. So start yeah. the boot camp, find a place where where momentarily you can you can suppress the emotions that you have around traumatic mm-hmm. events, find a way to to create some space between who you are as a as a person and what has happened in your life. And and was it at that moment that you were like, hey, you know, after the five dollar ahead boot camps, you're like, I, I could maybe see myself doing this and providing the same kind of space to other women? Yeah. Yeah, I really wanted to make an impact with women because there's a lot of women who went through what I went through, if not worse um, or less, you know, where they feel they're, they're allowing themselves to become a victim and um, we're not victims, you know, and so we have responsibility of taking control of our emotions. And so I wanted to control, take action of my emotions and not let that become the person who I wasn't going to be. So I turned that into something great, you know? And so that's how I really got into the fitness is try to make an impact for women. And you mentioned something there about, about being a victim. Is, is mm-hmm. there, do you think that there's, there's parallels to to that time in your life where you found something, a, a conduit to move through that yourself? Do you think that there's similarities there and where you see some people come through your gym now that have been through similar scenarios? A lot. It's, um, and honestly it's happening a lot more just because of COVID because people were home for a long time, you know, and, um, hanging out with by themselves or with the individual that is given, you know, doing these things to them. And so it's really tore them up. I'm seeing it. It's, it's pretty prominent right now. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, divulge any personal details that, that you don't okay. want to go into I'm or, totally or open. <laughs> anyone else's journey, but I, I'd like to kind of pull on that because I think that that alongside with, you know, protecting children on the internet are things mm-hmm. that like a lot of people don't want to admit are things that need to be done, but are extremely prevalent. So would you be open to going into a little bit more about, um, where you're seeing, this kind of abuse manifests in other people that, that are in your gym or you've interacted with in this, uh, in this fitness space and and maybe what they should be looking out for if they're being blind to it. Yeah, absolutely. Could you go into that? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely can. So, um, you want me to share just like a bit of my history, like just getting into that and then how to, to yeah. 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 So, um, and I'm actually writing a book, so I'm really excited about this. We can touch base about that later, snippet. but I saw a little um, slip it on your, on yeah. your Facebook. <laughs> so I'm really excited about that because um, this is this happens a lot uh, to a lot of women and even men too. Um, I have I found that I've talked to it's happened and it's with the when it's happened to them when they've gone through this experience, it's more prevalent with people that they know. 
Um, it can be a cousin, it can be a uncle, it could be a father, even brother, even sister. Um, so it just, it, it can be anybody. And with this, um, you know, for, for my history and with this, you know, um, my mom had married in, so I've got, I'm real close to my father. So my biological father, um, and so she had remarried and, um, this individual, he had some health issues. And so they had two children together and I'm very close to my brother and sister. They're my younger brother and sister. And, um, there was just times through that where he, the, the way that these individuals really start to control their situations is they gain your trust first. And that's exactly what my stepdad did was that he gained our trust first. And once we got our trust, then he knew he hooked us. Um, so he started to become uh, more abusive towards my mom. It started with my mom. Then once she had my little brother, it really started with my little brother. He was very, my little brother doesn't even remember any of it. Um, so he was very abusive towards my little brother. Then he had my little sister, didn't even touch her. But he started to notice he was losing control of my, my, me and my older brother. So I've got an older brother, younger brother, and a younger sister. Okay. We all lived in a small house. It was like about 750 square feet. It was really, wasn't that big. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was really small, um, but it was cute. We loved it. We got um, good memories there though, too, before all this, but, um, but anyways, um, so he gained the trust and this went, this went on for years. Um, and so what had happened was I'll never forget this day. I came home from school and the cops were there and this is when it all really started. Um, he had actually burned my brother's face and what had happened was he was trying to mask it, um, putting blame on other people, everything. He got away with it. And, um, so because he got away with it, my mom made up with him. And, um, so then things seemed to get a little bit better, but that's just when things started crashing. And so then he started, like I said, going back to, he was losing control of me and my older brother. That was when he started to move on to me. Um, the way that he was gaining trust was, um, he just said, Hey, I'm a gift from God to you. Da, 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 da. And so he, that was when he started to do things upon me, but he would threaten. So what he would say is like, if you tell anybody what I'm doing to you, I'm going to kill your mother or I'm going to kill your brother, you know? So he always, he knew that my, my little brother was, I was very close to him. And, um, I was like his mother bird, you know? And, um, but anyways, so it came to the point where it was just getting so bad. He started to abuse my mom again. And, um, I finally went to my, uh, this is in high school. This is years, years have gone by. And I, when we were in high school, I became pretty close to my uh, principal there. And he was asking questions about what was going on with our family. And so when I was talking to, um, him about it, um, it was hard for me to open up to him, but he said, Lindsay, I know what's going on. You just got to be open up to me. And finally I did. And I'm so grateful I did for that day because it felt like so much got off of my chest and off of my shoulders. Um, cause I felt like it was my responsibility to protect my family. And that's why, I stepped into that to protect them because I did not want him to hurt my mother, my brother, my other brother, or even go near my sister. He would threaten, he'd go near my sister, but mind you, he never touched my sister. My sister loved him, looked up to him. Yeah. So, um, so that was when I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I was holding so much responsibility that once that I told him everything, the principal, it just was such a huge sigh of relief. So then things, um, obviously a lot of things change, um, things, more personal things happen through there though, two child protective services got involved though as well, but we stayed with my mom. And so, um, after all that happened, I was like, oh man, I'm free. You know, I can do whatever the hell I want. And, and so I became like a huge partier getting into things, but it was because I was suppressing these feelings, that feeling of the years of the abuse. I just suppressed it so much because I felt like I had to be tough and strong because everybody saw me as the tough person. 
Um, and just like more of like the mother bird, <laughs> like I could take care of any situation, but really I couldn't take care of myself. And this is what I'm seeing with women is that they feel they have to be tough for their children. And I get it. And I understand that, but you also need to get the help that you need to, um, just to give you an example, uh, it was about three weeks ago, I met up with a girl at the gym and she had shared with me that, um, her husband controlled all the finances. He, he only gave her like 20 bucks a week. And, um, so I was trying to really dig deep and I could tell that he was very abusive towards her. And I told her too, I was like, well, you deserve to be here. You need to be here because the more that you allow him to control your situation, the worse it's going to get for your life. And the only way for you to release is to work on yourself. And that's why I developed Grit Life Fitness. You know, you're here to become the person who you're destined to be. And I want you to be obsessed to become the person who you're supposed to be. And so she really tried to work everything out. And she still messages me like, I'm still trying to get the money to come on into the gym. And, um, and it's, it's, it, it's really hard to see that because, you know, as somebody who's been through that, I'm like, I'm to the point where I'm like, fuck him, you know, tell him to go fuck off, walk away. But it's so hard for women to do that. And it comes to the point where you really should do that because the more that you give in, the less that you're going to be able to give out and pour onto your children. And think about this. If you have children too, which most of these women that I talk to, they do have children. They see that interaction and that relationship between you and your husband, that especially the men, the men are more likely to turn into the husband that you married, you know? And so that's because they see that that's their role model. Um, and the women are more than likely to become the woman that you are today as well, too. So you have to become that prime example of that. And that's why I told my husband, um, I said, our girls will never suffer. Well, they will, they'll suffer. You know, we all suffer, go through things, but I don't want them to go through what I ever went through. I don't want them to ever worry about money. I don't want them to ever feel that you and I are in this bad relationship. I want them to really experience life and go through that as well. And so later on in life, okay, so all this had, had gone on with our life. I never got help, James. Like I never talked to anybody about it. I just kept suppressing it because I'm like, yeah, I'm tough. I can get through it, whatever. I can help all these people, but I can't help people if I don't help myself get help myself. You know, the only way for me to help somebody is to be able to get the help that I need so that way I can share with them how to get through these situations. And so the day that I went and got help was when I got connected with God, because that was when my counselor, she was a strong Christian and I met up with her and she really helped me out. And that was when she got me reading the Bible, getting connected with Psalms. Um, anytime I feel any type of emotions going through, I can read Psalms. And that was when I really got connected with God. And then a year later, my husband and I got baptized and um, we got accepted into our church. We found a really good church. And then we moved and we found a really good church here though, too. But that was when I felt like even more weight was lifted off my shoulders because I just, I let it all go. Have you ever read the book, uh, The Art of Not Giving the Fuck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I'm reading that right now and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah. Cause now, yeah, it's just like, it's, it's to the point now where I, he talks about in there, you have got to take responsibility of your emotions. So sure. I went through a lot of shit and there's a lot of people out there who went through a lot of shit, but you can control your emotions. And when you control your emotions of that, sure. You can look at it as like, man, my life sucks. You know, I'm depressed. I had all this happen to me. Woe is me. Fuck that. Quit out of the woe is me and focus on like the things that you need to do to become the person who you're destined to be. So change your emotions about it. So that's how I flipped it, turned it into something good, learn from it. And what things do I need to do to create a massive footprint to help other people? And so that's why I started getting really into fitness and then everything grew. And then now we own our own gym and we're really making a difference right now. So you can either be something, turn something into great to become somebody who is great and become the great leader that you're destined to be, or you can be, woe is me and be the loser, you know? So it's, it's, it's your choice. And that's what I really 
talk to women about. I'm like, don't let these people control you. Even men, don't let these individuals control you. They, they don't decide your chapter of your next book. They don't decide your path. It's up to you to create that change. So that's kind of like what I've been running to, what I've been seeing with people is like, they're not taking responsibility of their emotions. They're allowing their emotions to succumb them and numb them. And they're not doing the things that they desire to do to become the person who they're destined to be. Right. Beautifully put, beautifully put. Um, one note, and then I want to go back. I want to go back a little bit to, uh, to that time where it was a little tumultuous. Um, you're, you're a woman of faith. Okay. Mm -hmm. If someone sits in front of you though, in a consultation and a, Hey coach, I really need you. Hey, Lindsay, I really need you family, friends, whatever. And they're not a person of faith. How do you communicate what you just did without them having a, a visceral reaction negatively to what you put your hope in? That's a really good question because faith and politics are very tough things to talk about, aren't they? <laughs> For most, yes. <laughs> um, I choose love over fear. So uh, you got to lead with love. And when you lead with love, it opens up the doorway to, to kind of maybe get into that faith, mm -hmm. you know? So because when you're talking about the love, then there, it softens up the conversation a lot more and it makes them open up a little bit more. And with that, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it does. I'm just curious. Cause I know that, uh, with my upbringing, <laughs> we grew up, uh, we grew up very Southern Baptist, right? Dad was a deacon. Mom came from the Catholic church. Um, and my dad converted her, right? Uh, we were Protestant growing up and, and very heavily involved. Mm -hmm. And I, I do know that <laughs> for as lovely as my father was before we lost him, uh, sometimes, People came back with with anger and frustration and stop talking to me about this God yeah. that I don't know that exists. Right. And my dad remained steadfast. But a lot of times, I mean, I, I don't know how he didn't react back when he's trying to show love, trying to show um, trying to show through service. Right. What he believes. And people are just mm -hmm. rejecting it to the to the core. But it's interesting because he too went through a childhood that's not one-to-one -one similar to what, what you went through, but has a lot of bullshit that came with his upbringing uh, from abuse from all angles as well. And it's, it's almost as though no matter who said what, he still remained a hundred percent steadfast. Like I'm still here and I'm still believing this because that's not your story. It's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, think you think about this with Jesus and his followers and how many people he talked to. He got 12 people to follow him. Did he give up? Nope. That's how strong your belief in yourself and who you, the things that you need to do, whether it's like opening a gym, you know, like with you, when you went on your entrepreneurship, I'm sure you had people bash you. I'm right. Or say it'll never including work. Including close family, but yes. Yeah. Oh, you know, I went through it though too. But your belief has got to be so strong, and it's got to, it's got to. You got to have that rhino skin and not even care and just go with it. Sure, you're going to fail, but in order to learn from experiences, you have to fail. So that way, you know what not to do as you're going through those things as well too. But um, but you know, in terms of, in terms of faith going back to it, I didn't believe in God for a really long time because I blamed him for the experiences that I went through. And I also went to a Catholic high school <laughs> and there was things in there that, um, my husband and I experienced that are like, why would you have to go through purgatory to get washed away before you go to heaven? That's really weird. <laughs> so, you know, there's just certain things that like we had questioned and that's where our belief just went, you know, it really, it really went down. And so for 13 years, we didn't go to church. And so that's why I like with the experiences that I went through, sometimes we have to go through the thorny bushes, the quicksand, the mud and get all these wounds and stuff climbing through the forest um, before you really get in touch with your faith, you know, um, and it doesn't matter if you're Catholic or whatever, you know, um, I think the biggest thing is 
how do you explain this? <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, just word vomit. I mean, we're not, we're not on any clock. Just yeah, I know. I'm just like, it's because you can't explain the feeling. You have to experience the feeling yourself. Um, it's like this, this light, you know, it just shines up. Hopefully it doesn't fall. It just shines up. Like it, it, it just comes in front of you. And then when you, when you see that, you're like, wow. And then things start, you start experiencing things that you can't explain, you know, like my husband and I were always in the negatives in our (laughs) bank account, like after we had moved and stuff, um, because we wanted to pursue entrepreneurship that happened for like a year or two, but then we were getting connections. So we're just going through things to build up our character. Right. And so as we were experiencing these things, I'm like, okay, something's, oops, something's going on here. You know, like we can't explain it. And so that's when we really started getting connected into our faith and um, understanding that like, you're going to get answers that you don't want and you're going to get experiences that you don't want to go through, (laughs) but there's reasons why you're going through these things, you know, and the answer is always right in front of your face, right here, right in front of your nose. And we just have to open up our eyes and we have to not just listen we or hear, we have to truly listen and we have to truly visualize and we have to truly see the things in front of us and then just fine tune those binoculars. And then you really understand like why you have the path the way you do. Would you take anything back from your childhood? No. Not a single thing? No. Not a bit of hurt, not a bit of trauma, not a bit of abuse? Nope. And I wouldn't be who I am today. Yeah, it sucked. Um, but I wouldn't be who I am today for my girls and for our clients at the gym, for my family, for my husband. And I wouldn't be who I am today. Not life is not perfect. It's not, it's imperfectly perfect. You know, I'm, I'm one of those, you two jewels that have like all these cracks and <laughs> stuff all around it. You just buff around them, you know, and that's what makes us each unique. And it's up to you to turn it into something great and create a story out of it. Yeah. I think that's a hell of a summation there. And I agree mm-hmm. with you. I absolutely do. I think that if you go back and you try to reverse engineer how you would have done it differently, there's a high probability that you wouldn't be where you are right now, that you wouldn't have the strength, the resiliency, the ability to get through shit that is coming your way, whether you believe in God or not. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you can think of all the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just like, but you have to let that go. There's reasons why, you know, and you can turn those reasons into such impactful chapters to really empower other people. Yeah, no, I think that that's important to know. So Mm -hmm. rolling back, rolling back to, I I believe this was pre-Charleston. I I think so. I could be wrong. Um, With the Women's Empowerment Tribe. Mm. Was that pre-Charleston? Did I have that right? Oh, that was after. Um, It was probably, oh, All right. So we've lived in three different, four different, well, we've lived everywhere. So we moved from Indiana to South Carolina, Mm -hmm. lived there for a year, moved to Maine, lived in Maine for three years, moved to Oklahoma, was there for a year. Mm -hmm. And then we loved South Carolina so much we moved back. And so we were there for almost six years. Um, And it was then when we got in tune with, and we started network marketing. Mm -hmm. And so that's when, um, within the company that we were with, we started the women's empowerment tribe. It was like in 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. Okay. So a lot of what you said this morning, right. Reminds me more of a motivational speaker, someone that's actually gone through shit than it does a gym owner as I would categorize a gym owner. Now that's a, a, a massive sweeping generalization based on the interactions that I have with most gym owners that are around our sales, our numbers, our LTV, mm-hmm. et cetera, that, that I don't communicate with around life things, right? Yeah. I, I think that it's interesting that you're in the position that you're in where the, the conduit for you to be able to impact these people is the gym and your influence in the gym, mm-hmm. but you weren't forged necessarily in the gym. The gym was the escape for you. The gym was the, mm-hmm. the, the polish, the icing. It was closer to to the end of coming out of those times. So, yeah. I mean, why is Lindsay Mattingly not on the road hitting stages 
every year? I used to do that. <laughs> I used to do that a lot. And that's a really good question. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, I became a mother and, um, our girls were about like two and three at the time when I was doing that a lot. Uh, cause we did very well in network marketing. We're in the top 5% of our company. And then, uh, we moved on to another company and we were in the top six in that company. Uh, we did very well. So we traveled a lot, um, loved it. And we were a little bit younger. I'm 40 now. So we we're a little bit younger at the time, but, um, I realized, um, I shouldn't be traveling away to talk to other people when I should be empowering my daughter on her birthday. That happened a lot. And it didn't really sink in until it was like one of my last years, uh, with our first network marketing company. I'm like, I, I can't do this anymore. You know, I love it. I can't do it anymore. Um, the women's empowerment tribe was great. It was very short lived, uh, when you have five women who are involved with a nonprofit organization, you have five women with very different personalities and it's like throwing spaghetti at the wall sometimes. So we could never come to an agreement, even though we loved each other so much. So we had to end that one. Um, but it was a lot of fun. We, we, uh, I remember one year we went to Vegas and we had a huge event there and I taught Zumba. I used to teach Zumba and it was in front of 400 people and it was so fun. Um, and then we spoke on stage and then Mel Robbins came and spoke for us. Yeah, that was cool. And she did a phone call for us as well. Um, never was able to meet her in person, even though we were like in charge of it. Uh, but, uh, we did talk to her on the phone. She's an incredible human being, but she's really what empowered me to get in touch with like public speaking and stuff like that as well. But honestly, I had to stop because, um, we traveled enough. We lived in all the different States and it was time for my husband and I to settle and focus more on what we wanted to do with our lives and with our careers, especially for our girls, you know? Yeah. Do you think you'll ever go back to it? After they get older? I think so. Yeah. I love it. I love talking to people. I love sitting and listening. Um, I really enjoy hearing everybody's stories, um, and just zipping the lip and just listening to them because so many people don't listen to other people anymore. And that's why I love our consultations, um, because people really come in and nobody listens to them. So now's the time that we can listen to them. I, I love it. Um, but that's why I'm writing my book though, too, is, um, to get more because traveling and public speaking is great, but you can only touch a certain amount of people with a book. You can touch many more. So, um, so I'm hoping to get that done pretty soon and get that out. And then maybe who knows what the future holds. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, <laughs> that's funny. I mean, it, it sounds like you, you probably couldn't have put the dots together moving forward as you can reverse engineering, right? Connecting mm -hmm. it backwards. Hindsight is 2020. Yeah. They probably didn't know that you'd be sitting here today. No running great life, <laughs> you know, going to conferences, being a panelist, crushing the gym space, having coaches that are, that are pushing forward the mission when you're not there. Like how could you reverse engineer that? You know, like, right. Say, Oh, I'm going to be here, you know, 2023 in August. This is where we're going to be. Yeah. Sounds like you've done a lot of bouncing around. So yep. might get back on the road after kids are, are older. That mm -hmm. totally makes sense. Your book, right? Your mission to help more people, to empower more people, to bring awareness and understanding around their own journey and, and maybe where they're stuck, where you were previously. Right. What do you truly aim to achieve with the release and the, the pushing of the book? I want to help people come out of the hole, whether they're looking to um, grow within their career. I'm finding with especially a lot of people our age, um, COVID, honestly, well, I'm just going to say the C word, um, honestly, is created a dent in a lot of people's lives. Um, and I noticed that it suppressed a lot of their abilities of doing what they truly want to do. Um, and so they've lost empowerment in themselves. So my book is really one. It's, it's not so much about my story. So I am going to go into more details of my story because what I shared with you today is honestly, it's just the sprinkles. It's not like the nitty gritty of what um, we truly went through. I mean, it was, it was hell. And, but 
we all go through hell. We all go through experiences and you just cannot allow those experiences to hold you back from your true potential. And so I want to share something bad that turned me into something great and to share how you can do that with your experience as well too. And because so many people have allowed the outside sources to tell them, no, no, don't open that gym. Don't do this. Don't start your own business. Don't go off and do public speaking. Don't do this. Don't have kids. Da, 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 da. And it's like, fuck you. So that's where this book is coming from. It's time to tell the world to go screw off because this is your life and nobody else's life. And you have the power to create that change within your own path. And you have the bricks, you have the cement to lay down your own path. And it's not going to be a smooth path. It's not, it's going to be a very bumpy road, but it's going to be fun. And so I just really hope that my book helps more people, even if it's just one person, honestly. Um, Let's say you wanted to be the president, James, you know, like, I hope that it empowers you to become the president. No, I'm just kidding. But I just, I really hope that it just empowers people to take risk and do the things that they need to do to hit their dream and their goals. Has, has any one specific book in, in your life played that kind of role that, uh, in, I mean, that, that amount of influence over you? Oh, there's so many. And I have my books right up here too. Um, man. Okay. So I really, um, liked girl, wash her face by Rachel Hollis and girl, stop apologizing. When I read Girl Stop Apologizing, that's when I got like my attitude a lot more out. And that was just recently, like two years ago. That's it's actually a, a year and a half ago. And that's really when the gym started growing though, too. Um, had to get out my own way. Um, but not only that, uh, I loved Girl Stop Apologizing because um there's a lot of women entrepreneurs out there though, too, that feel that they shouldn't pursue certain things because they have their kids, they feel it's gonna pull their time away. And she's she's basically saying, stop apologizing for growing something that could give so much back to your family. Like I've gone to my girls' soccer games with my laptop and done lead nurtures and stuff like that there, phone calls, consultations over the phones, but I was there. I was still present in their life. I never did that during their games, but I did that during their practices. Um, But I also sat down with the girls too and sharing with them, uh, this is what the book taught me. I shared with them like, Hey, listen, mommy's going to be, I'm going to be working a lot more because we really want to get the gym from here to here. So, um, I'm going to be working at least this time from this time. And I just want you guys to know I'm taking off Friday nights, Saturdays, so that way we can go off and do something. And I promise, you know, every other Wednesday, we're going to go to the lake or whatever. Um, and this is like over the summer when we really started to, um, implement a lot more into our business a couple of years or like a year and a half ago. And they came to an understanding of that. So they knew that, okay, well, she's going to be going to do that because I was to the point where I felt bad for leaving them and always going to work, which I, I understand that. And I get that as a parent, but also you've got a dream to build. And sometimes it does take some sacrifices and losing out on that time. So now like the way the dream's going right now, we're going to be able to create a lot more moments, um, and travel a lot more and do things a lot more with them. And actually we're able to now, um, with our family because we can leverage our time. And, but that was just a really impactful book. Cause it really just opened up my eyes a lot more as a mother, um, as an entrepreneur and as a business owner that it's, it's okay to step away for a moment so that way you can grow your dream. Well, wow. aligned in expectations and desired outcomes with kiddos. That is something yes. that I have not heard in a long time. <laughs> Most people are like, you will deal with this because I'm your parent. <laughs> I'm going to do what I want to do. That is a very interesting way to go, but yeah. that's a refreshing that's a refreshing way to go to hear on my end. And I've mm-hmm. got no kids. Very yeah. interesting to hear. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm, I'm curious, right? Jasper and Canton and Atlanta, like you had bounced around a ton of places, loved South Carolina, leave South Carolina. How the heck did you end up in North Atlanta? 
and Jasper. Um, of all places. I know, in the mountain places. And Dave Dunham makes fun of me all the time. Uh, <laughs> well, we... Well, after so just a little history after my husband and I got married we always wanted to build a self-sustainable farm because we knew shit's gonna hit the fan soon and so when we moved to South Carolina we did we grew a farm and it was so fun we had pigs and stuff they, they were like our first row animals pigs got out so many times and they finally got out for two weeks our town we we're the talk of the town and then the pigs disappeared it was so funny but um but anyway so we came to the point to um you know, as entrepreneurs, um, we were in that. Okay. So we were very successful in network marketing. Um, and then we moved on to another company. We did very well. I was making about 14 to 15,000 a month in that company. And then what had happened was that company decided to move to e-commerce one day. So guess what happened to our checks? Yep. I brought my husband home, retired him. We're traveling, you know, I'm like, Oh my God, what are we going to do? You know? And so that was when we put our heads together, try to figure things out. So he got into real estate um, and that started off okay, but it just wasn't generating the income that we needed. And so we wanted to start our own gym. Um, so actually I was looking into um, open up a gym with women only and call it badass beauty. And I wanted to have like a nonprofit for battered and abused women to come in and work out for free um, and have like free childcare, but I couldn't figure out how to like go about that. And then I got connected with burn Boot Camp, And so, um, when I got connected with them, I got offered, I applied for a couple jobs and I got offered three jobs. One was in, um, Beaufort, South Carolina. Then we had Miami and then we had Canton. <laughs> and so we were looking okay, where would be the best place to be? We always wanted to move to Florida, but they wanted me to run four gyms down there. So we just opt that out. That would have been too much. And then we looked in Beaufort, cost of living is woo, way sky high. So then we looked at Canton and we're like, well, Atlanta, you know? So we went and checked it out. And then that was when I took on the job and I was the head coach there uh, for about three years. And so um, was there for three years and then learn what to do, what not to do as a business owner. And so then afterwards I opened up, we wanted to open up grit life fitness and we found a spot in Canton because that spot was perfect. Uh, the, the, uh, price per square foot was perfect. Cause it was crazy high everywhere else. And then the location was perfect too. It was right off the highway. We're real easy to find We're upstairs, you know, so it was just, it was a very, good location. And then, um, as far as Jasper, why are we living in Jasper? Well, we lived in Canton for, at the time and the girls went to school in Canton. And, um, this is when we're, I was still at burn Boot Camp. Well, we wanted to get farm. We wanted to start our own farm. Um, we cannot do HOA. We've got, <laughs> we got told on so many times by HOA. Um, I had pink hair at the time. So I went to go pick up the girls and somebody posted in the, you know, one of those Karens in the, um, neighborhood group chat and just said, Hey, there's this woman with pink hair. She was hanging her head all out the window and her husband, like they look real young, like 25. I'm like, wow, thank you. But, uh, they're at the, uh, school. I don't know what they're doing. And so there was like this long post, right? <laughs> like everybody's commenting. Oh my gosh, they're pedophiles. And so that's when Justin and I were like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We can't be ourselves. And so uh, we were thinking of building. And so we actually bought a piece of property. Um, it's about eight acres of what we have right now. And we were going to build. Um, well, the builders fell through. So we we're thinking, okay, well, why don't we just buy a house near Woodstock Canton area? And um, then we can rent it out as we're building ourselves. And we that was when we found the house that we're in right now. It's connected to our property. All we had to do was knock down the fence. So we have 10 acres now. Yeah. And, and it's great. So Jasper's wonderful. Um, it's about 15 minutes from the gym. We're right off the highway. Um, we're pretty close to everything as well. And it's just like, it's a really good location and we can have our homestead here. So that's how we found here. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that makes way more sense. I was like, there is no chance that you're chilling in South Carolina in Charleston of all places. And they're like, you know what? Canton sounds like a great idea. 
out of nowhere. There's no way that happened. I no. I'm glad that I have a little bit more context there because that made zero yeah. sense to me at all. Yeah, it was a very odd town where we hold really like mm-hmm. Canton, but it's outside of Atlanta, you know? So, and we've got family all around the country. So we figured, man, if we got Atlanta, they could just fly in Atlanta and because yeah. Atlanta is connected everywhere. So that's just how it happened. It was cool. Oh, definitely makes sense mm-hmm. there. Um, so you're at burn boot camp, you end up leaving burn boot camp, you end mm-hmm. up deciding to open your gym in the middle of the pandemic, yep. um, in the middle of the fall of 2020. Well, why mm-hmm. then? Why not? Why not? Like later when you knew that everything was going to be, I open? got a story. Okay. There's a story. I always have a story. All right. <laughs> so when I was at burn boot camp, the same, this all happened within the same week mm-hmm. I put in my notice. Mm-hmm. I gave them at least 30 days because I knew it would take a minute to find a head coach. Um, two days later, the owner sold it. Two days after that, that was when the lockdown happened. And on that day of the lockdown was when I signed the lease for the gym. <laughs> My goodness. Do you want to know how many people told me you're never going to make it? Probably everyone. It's a bad time. You probably should wait. And I said, ah, here's me all positive. And I'm like, no, people need us more than anything right now. And so uh, we ran with it. My husband was nervous as hell. And I was like, well, we'll just figure it out. <laughs> just yeah. build the bricks as we're going and build the wings as we're falling. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah. that uh, The building that, that the gym's in, y'all, are, y'all lease that, that space? Yes, we do. Yeah, we okay. have a five year lease. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So you're still in the middle of that one. Um, mm-hmm. Now, from the time that that happened to when y'all could actually have people in person, I mean, obviously, you know, Kent played a little bit differently than uh, than a lot of other governors did. I know that myself was in the gym with key card access in the middle of the pandemic in Georgia, uh, down in Peachtree City, actually, um, with just some paper, you know, some some butcher paper in the front windows. You know, that's that's how we did it. Um, but how long was it from the time that like the, the date that you signed to take that lease on to when you could have people in person? Cause I know that was like August when that happened or you, you signed the lease back in March when we had the shutdown or May when we had the shutdown. And then it was, yeah, we signed it March 6th. That was the day all that shit hit the fan. Yeah. And I have the, it's funny cause the picture shows up and I have my pink hair. I'm all smiling. And Justin's like, eh. <laughs> It was so funny. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Very... I'm just reliving that moment because he was nervous as hell. Pink uh... <laughs> hair. You'll, you'll have to you have to send me that pink hair picture. That I, wild. I, I've I've had green, purple, blue, all the colors, and I just bought more pink. I'm probably gonna do pink again. My girls like convinced me to go natural, but I don't know. I like the pink. So yeah, we so we signed the lease in March March six. Mm-hmm. Um. We were supposed to open in April. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that didn't happen. We were supposed to open in May, June, mm-hmm. July, mm-hmm. August, finally September. They didn't even uh, do the build out until it was in August. So we didn't even know if we we're going to open. So we started everything online. I was like, you know what? Screw it. Um, and that was when like, and we can, I don't know if you plan to talk about this. That was when we got into gym launch though, too, um, because I started everything online and it was hilarious because towards the end of my days at burn, I was miserable, overworked, you know, just underappreciated. That's why my voice is still raspy because I worked 14 to 16 hour days. Not kidding. On top of that, having one-on-one consultations and stuff in between sessions. I never got a break and I was miserable. I'd come home and couldn't talk to my husband or my girls. Um, so I called one of my friends and I just said, um, I was bawling my eyes out. I said, can we please do a franchise together? <laughs> uh, cause they own a successful gym in Oklahoma. And then that's when he shared with me the blueprint, um, with gym launch and stuff. And so I bought that, read about it. And that's how I started my online business, you know, with the 21 days and it did very well. Yeah. You got on it while it was hot, while Alex was still here, huh? Yeah. Alex told Kale, he said, you need to reach out to Lindsay. She shared all of these stats 
And it is crazy because I had an 83% show rate and, and that was back when it was all good for online, you know? Um, but, but anyways, it was just, it was really cool to like, see how much it's grown and getting connected with that and how much it really helped us out. But that's how, that's how we all started. We started online. We did everything through zoom and the owner let us the, there's a spot next to us that was empty. So he let us like store stuff in there. And I did consultations in there and I even did live zooms in there. So I had like, uh, nails and hammers all behind me and I'm working out with everybody. And <laughs> It was a mess, but Hey, people signed up, you know, <laughs> yeah. Grit life today is a, a little bit different visually yes, than is. Grit life was then, huh? We don't have nails or hammers anywhere. <laughs> you don't have blank walls with drywall spackle no, all over it or paint or yeah. <laughs> scaffolds. Is, I had scaffolds behind me too. <laughs> that's wild. But you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, it you like, do. It sounds like even amidst a lot of people losing jobs, having mental health problems going on, a lot of things happening with the pandemic. It was almost a perfect storm for y'all to open. It was almost a perfect storm for everything to kind of yes. lockstep for you to jump into a new opportunity and try to 10X, right? Yes. Because there was no yeah. way to really be comfortable at all. Yeah. Yeah. It, you have to really be uncomfortable. And as a business owner, you always have to come up with ideas, but people needed us more than anything during that time. And because it's that physical touch, people were able to have that physical touch and it, you know, doing this, the zooms was really making a huge difference for people, um, to focus, like you said, their mental health, it really did help with them with that. Yeah. And, and I kind of want to fast forward. Uh, I want to respect your time. We're about to get out of here soon, but, yeah. um, with grit life, right? You're not, you're obviously not the only coach. You wouldn't be doing all this traveling and running around doing whatever you need to do for your life. Right. Mm -mm. Um, how did you select your team and why are they the best people to be in your gym coaching people? Well, that's a very good question. Um, as an owner, when you're growing, um, it's a great thing, but then you kind of get that desperate mode and that's when you have to not be in that desperate mode and you have to suppress it. Cause if you get in that desperate mode, you're going to hire the wrong people. Um, you have to do it strategically. I was very, uh, particular in who I wanted. So I put everybody through a two week non-pay, um, internship. Um, well, here's how the process goes is I, I post on Indeed, I put it on ZipRecruiter and all, a couple other apps out there though, too. Um, they fill out a form. I actually have a Google form that they fill out because I want to get to know them. Like, what's your favorite clothing and stuff like that. Um, so when I call them, it's a real quick, if I spark interest, call them, we'll quick five to 10 minutes. And I said, okay, coming in and work out. I want to make sure they're in shape. I've sent people away because they're not in shape. They tell me, yeah, I'm in shape. They come and work out and do our class and they can't even do a freaking bicep curl. I'm like, yeah, bye. So that shows me if they're in shape. Um, and if I like them after that, I see how they interact. Then we sit down afterwards for a good 20 minutes. If I send them home, I'm not hiring them. If I sit down with them, more than likely going to be hired, right? So then um, we go through the process and then I discuss it with uh, now my husband's working with us full time. So then what we do is we put them through the two week uh, non-pay internship. They can come in as often as they want to work out, come in as often as they want to follow. But in the internship is just following two semi-privates and then two sessions per week. But if they come in more, that shows me they want it. So then after that process, then we do, um, if we like them, then we hire them. We go through the pay they earn commissions. And then it's a whole 90 day process of learning. Cause the first thing is we need to get them on the floor and they need to learn the grit life way. Then we teach them on nutrition. We teach them on the supplements. We teach them on modifications. So then they are good, crisp and clean and ready to go after the 90 days. And they can start taking on clients and, um, grow within the team though, too. So, um, we've got a really good team, got a really good team. The, uh, the team that you have now is that mm -hmm. what is currently on your website? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, um, I just have one girl, she's moving to California though, but it's all for growth. But anyways, yeah, we've, um, we've got five coaches now and we just hired in a new one and then we're interviewing another one tomorrow. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. I, there is, there's one person on your team that is always bubbly. That is always wonderful. Um, and someone I got to know from doing lines in calls with Ed and that's Cassandra. Yeah, Cassandra. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness. 
absolutely, absolutely could be a stand in. Yes. Anything grit life. Right. Because yeah. she is wonderful. She is wonderful. Absolutely She's wonderful. the one that's moving. No. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, I know. I know. But it's all for growth, you know, so they're really um, our boyfriend got a really good job. Mm. So I'm just so proud of them. But I'm so sad. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, she's a great person. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, um, it, I mean, it looks like you got you got a stack team from the five that you have listed on your website. Mm-hmm. Look pretty stacked. Look very in shape. Look like they got great credentials. Yep. And uh, if they made it past the 90 days and they're coaching consistently. Well, at least they're going to be up there matching your energy. So that's that's yeah. definitely a solid thing to uh, to see. Um, last thing here, is there anything that myself or anyone else couldn't find online about Lindsay Mattingly or Grit Life Fitness that you want them to know if they're listening to this? I almost made it to American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah. So we had, cause I was a singer and, um, we, ha- <laughs> I was in, it was, a uh, within our town, we had karaoke contests and I was in the top 15. I won every single one that we're going to within the, um, at the restaurants and stuff or at the bars. But, um, so when you, or then they took the top 10. So I made it to the top 10 and then we went to, um, with, they had the bar and I was like, yeah, I got my song already. I was going to sing Alanis Morissette. I was so excited. And the person who won could get an automatic placement in Nashville star or American idol. And it's within the top 25. Yeah. It was really cool. I'm like, Cause I've always wanted to sing. This is before my yelling days at clients. But, um, so I was really excited, got everything ready. And then they said, oh, the bar lost power. So we're going to a country bar. And I'm like, I don't know one lick of country. <laughs> oh, this is going to be really interesting. So we get there. My, um, ex, my sister-in-law at the time, she, um, she was helping me trying to find some songs and, uh, I found one by no doubt, but I didn't practice it at all. So I sang no doubt, um, ended up getting third place, but still it was just like, Oh, if I would have had that song, I would have killed it. Cause the guy that did the country song at the country bar freaking rocked it. So he made it on to Nashville star. It was really cool. So yeah, that was my, my star freedom there. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. That's, uh, that's not anywhere online. That's kind of crazy. No. Uh, well, Lindsay, I really appreciate you making the time for this today. I appreciate you you pouring out your heart and opening mm-hmm. up about things that, uh, I didn't even know we were going to be getting into. Uh, yeah, if anyone is, <laughs> if anyone is looking for, for you, for your team, uh, mm-hmm. to be, you know, potentially able to join the team or come into the gym or just get more connected to you and your world, how, how can they best find you? You can Google me. Honestly, I come right up. So, um, but feel free to connect with me on Instagram. Um, we've got grit life fitness, LLC, or we have, um, what was my other one? Um, tough as grit is, uh, my one on Instagram. I'm not as much active on Instagram, my personal one as I am for the gym, but I'm more active on Facebook because I have a bigger following on Facebook. So you can even add me on Facebook as well. Lindsay Mattingly, um, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, I'll get out to you as best as I can busy schedule, but honestly, any questions or anything like that, I'm here to help. Heck yeah. Well, I really appreciate you being here. It means a lot. Um, glad to see you also not on a training call. Yeah, (laughs) definitely. Definitely a time. (laughs) Hang on for just just a second here. I'm going to stop the recording. Sure. And we will see all of y'all later. Bye.